One of the biggest challenges is to understand coverage um, because that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming for um, a rich corpus of data that has, has as much coverage of the marathon as, as is possible. Um, now what coverage actually means kind of depends on what you ultimately might want to do with this video. Um, now again if you look at the kind of the professional um, kind of broadcast they tend to focus on the front runners kind of the professional athletes who's going to win um, and then a few broad shots of of, I guess the fun runners may be picking out kind of people of interest. Oh, there's the guy running in the chicken suit for charity, for example. Um, but what, what we wanted to do was try and see if we could build rich enough video that we could tell a story of any individual runner taking part in the marathon. So can we get kind of multiple shots of any given runner? Um, so for example, uh, not just the guy in the chicken suit in kind of one particular location, but can we tell his story as they start at the start line from various kind of vantage points around the course and then film them again as they cross the finish line. And so, and for any given kind of fun runner or charity runner, um, uh, can we begin to do that? Were there some real notable ones that you got right and thought, wow, that's brilliant? I think we were, we were, we were surprised just by kind of an arbitrary couple that we took, that we took out that, about uh, how recognisable a person was. When you know that runner123 is wearing an orange top and you've seen him in four videos, then it's remarkably easy to then find that person in a given uh, a, 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 minute, a minute of video. Um, so what we're also now <coughs> trying to do with this video set is also add additional interesting information that will allow us to tell different stories that aren't just kind of through by runner number. Um, so what, what, what we did is we ha had an exercise where we basically presented all of our video fragments um, to a bunch of people and we fed them pizza in as a reward for doing this. Um, but we asked them to watch the video in kind of one minute fragments and tag anything that they thought was interesting that somebody else might like to watch. Um, and so there's all sorts of crazy stuff that happens at the marathon. There's, there's, uh, there's hundreds of people dressed as Robin Hood. Um, there's uh, people wearing costumes. There's people running for charity. There's bands playing by the side of the road. All this stuff might get captured by in our in our corpus of video that again add interesting um, uh, colour uh, to, to telling stories of the marathon. So another story we might tell is of all of the Robin Hoods in the marathon as opposed to just like a, an individual runner. So we got people to tag the video and we got them to tag it by kind of quality um, so, is there a finger in front of the lens? Is it pointing at the sun? Should we have that while you're talking? Yeah. <laughs> is it pointing at the sun? Is it a stable shot? Is it by the side of a road? Is it in Parkland? Are people clapping and cheering? And then also thinking about the content. So, um, yeah, are there people in fancy dress? Are the runners running or are they walking? Um, uh, are there any Robin Hoods? You know, ad, any any kind of a, a, a additional information, and then again we can kind of add this add this information to kind of enrich our stories. So, for example, we have footage of a uh, a runner running the race dressed as the Cookie Monster um, for for charity, and we have tags of him by his runner number. But now we also have multiple tags of him as Cookie Monster. So again, we can apply the same approach and pull out eight videos of the Cookie Monster at various points around the race. The next step for this is to basically build a, an online repository. So the idea is that people collect these videos and that they're immediately made available on, 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 online. Um, so people can look for people they know and we can aut automatically pull out videos that we know that they're in, but also videos that they might be in, and get the person who's perhaps interested in seeing the Cookie Monster to help us further enrich the data set. So again, this is this human computation task. Uh, looking for Cookie Monster automatically in a video is probably difficult, but people are really good at it. Um, 
And so hopefully they can allow us to kind of pin down more instances of the cookie so, monster. So you're basically saying that rather than wading through, if you're looking for the cookie monster, maybe you are the cookie monster and you're looking yeah, at your yeah. race, you don't have to wade through the 12 hours of footage because we can work out and give you a good guess at yeah, where yeah. you're probably going to be. So yeah. you're only going to have to look through an hour of footage. Yeah. Or yeah, exactly, exactly. And so we can give you clips that you're definitely in um, and those that you, that, that you might be in. And you may be kind of tagging people you recognise and further points of interest all helps to kind of making the corpus of data much more interesting and therefore much more interesting for f future people to look at. So we hope, so, so we think this is, this is a process where throughout we have people kind of capturing and tagging data and adding points of interest and that only serves to enrich the data and make it more navigable um, and allow us to tell stories better with it. So do you see this as an archiving thing or a, or a thing for the people who are in the race or a thing for research or...? I think all of those. <laughs> so uh, it's definitely interesting, well we hope it's interesting for people who were in the race to be able to kind of pull out footage for themselves. Uh, I think it's interesting for people who perhaps were spectators at the marathon or perhaps uh, couldn't be there. So for example, if you know, somebody you knew was running in the marathon, but you couldn't physically be there, then you can perhaps still relive some of that experience or, or kind of re-engage with it in some way. Um, I think there's an archival tool, it's quite, it's quite useful. So we have, a, we have an interesting large well, uh, the collection of videos that might be useful for somebody at some point. Um, and I think there's an argument for actually applying some of these techniques to things other than a marathon. So we've chosen the marathon because it's perhaps the most obvious example. Um, but you might think you could do this with anything that goes along a, 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 a linear geographically kind of route. So, you know, the Tour de France, uh, it's kind of rally rally racing, kind of any, any kind of sporting event. Um, but I think I'm also interested in thinking how it could be applicable to music events, gigs and festivals, um, citizen journalism, kind of riots uh, and kind of reconstructing riots and, and what happened has been an interesting thing could, recently. Could be a legal um, tool in that instance. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. And so, so there are a lot, it raises a lot of kind of interesting connotations as to yeah, what it means when the, the crowd is suddenly available, uh, is suddenly able um, to kind of collect and make sense of a large uh, portion of information kind of by themselves without having to rely on kind of the big organisations to, to do it for them. So yeah, the interesting things for research are understanding um, the ability of a crowd to collect this data. What are the issues? We've already seen some. So issues of kind of camera work. Can we train people automatically to hold their camera steady? Uh, how do we kind of direct people around the course? How do we kind of orchestrate a crowd as a whole? Because, yeah, I mean, obviously this is me with my sort of camera yeah. head on, um, but potentially the people could be pointing in the wrong direction, they could yeah. be framed wrong. I mean, there's yeah. the obvious things yeah. you just said about shaky cameras and things, but, yeah. you know. Yeah, and so we, we, might, we might think about how we, so research-wise, we might think about how we improve our corpus. And improvement <coughs> doesn't just mean getting more footage, it means getting better footage. Um, so, in the same way, uh, I guess a, a modern stills camera will detect when you're smiling and then automatically take the picture, we might have things uh, that instruct you in how to take uh, better, better footage. Um, so, for example, maybe, yeah, maybe when you start up our app, it kind of tells you what kind of shots it needs or wants to help best yeah. contribute to the call. I suppose if you've got five people in the, in the very near vicinity, you can then ask those five people to get different. To, to, yeah, yeah, or maybe move to different places. Or maybe it's kind of, I think it's give and take. We might say, um, if we know that you're here to watch your uncle, we might say, if you go to this bit of the course, you'll be able to see your uncle because he's going to turn up in about 10 minutes because he's been tagged 10 minutes ago. Um, and also you're helping to fill a hole in our video coverage. Um, so you so can send people to the industrial estate is what you're telling me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one of the real, one of the big challenges is to kind of sensitively balance people's experience of being a spectator because when they're not there to be camera operators, they're there to spectate and have a good time. So it's about sensitively balancing that 
while also being able to collect some interesting footage from them. I'm going to be going to XYZ event next. I mean, how can I get involved in this? Can I use your technology? Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, the challenge with, the, the biggest challenge with crowdsourcing, so, you know, essentially this is what we're doing is crowdsourcing. Um, the biggest challenge with crowdsourcing is assembling a crowd. Um, you need people to do this. It doesn't work if you don't have enough people. So the first time we did this, we, um, we explicitly recruited people. So we essentially bribed them to take part um, uh, to gather our, our, our initial corpus. But now what we want to do is kind of uh, make this more available and get people to use it kind of en masse, essentially. Um, and to also begin to understand kind of uh, how people use it naturally, so when they're not explicitly asked to ask for it. Um, so what we're planning on doing is, is trying to be a bit more organised, um, um, making our app available um, kind of through the App Store, that kind of thing. We're, we're hoping to develop it for, uh, for multiple platforms. Um, and then to advertise when we're de deploying it at certain races, to, so to have a concerted effort to kind of, uh, for example, at the next marathon wherever um, is to have a concerted effort to make it available and advertise it and get people using it because the more people who use it the the, the better our collection of footage is um, okay so even if only one person uses it you know we've still got one point of view of the marathon uh, the more people who use it the more points of view we can get um, so that that's that's my aim moving forward is to definitely make it available um, encourage people to download it and use it um, for, for upcoming events and marathons and, and see what we get from it. Because yeah, I, I can see it being used for all sorts of things from you know, skiing, downhill, mountain bike racing yep. through to bobsled, you know, you name it. it. It could be anything that takes place over a, but even a, I suppose a team event could potentially, yep. Yep. you know, if you're watching a rugby match and you're on one side of the pitch and 20 people are on different parts of the pitch. Yeah, theory, yeah, yeah. Sport, professional sporting gets really difficult because of broadcasting rights. Uh, lawyers tend to get involved, um, so we like doing we like doing kind of uh, things that are a bit a bit a bit less commercial, a bit more kind of uh, interesting for the local community, for example. So, so um, perhaps school school football might or school rugby might be yeah, something that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, But even I suppose that comes to if mar a marathon, if there's a band playing a music. Uh, <laughs> team, then that's oh yeah, yeah. Personally, I'm really interested in understanding how this might work for. Uh, festivals, music festivals, um, so uh, people milling around, kind of filming stuff they think is interesting. What's what's the kind of the uh, navigable online version of Glastonbury uh, that, that you can visit because you couldn't get a ticket because they'd sold out too quickly, for example. Um, but that opens a whole can of worms about kind of yeah broadcasting, filming, bootlegging, that 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 kind of thing. Um, but I think this. Uh, I think fundamentally the idea of uh, crowdsourcing footage in general, whether or not it's tagged uh, and, and kind of visualised in exactly the way we've done it, it's certainly a, a growing uh, um, ability that we all have. There's a bunch of tools popping up now where you record, um, a bunch of people go to a gig and they record footage of the band playing uh, and it automatically uses the uh, the soundtrack to sync up those clips to pr to, to provide a uh, to provide um, uh, a single video and there's a bunch of examples of this so, so like fan of the Beastie Boys organised a kind of a crowd a crowd videoed uh, um, video as, as as did some a bunch of Radiohead fans so it's interesting that a bunch of people are kind of like self organising in or order to collect this stuff um, I think what makes the marathon stuff interesting is there's no common frame of reference for stitching this stuff together and understanding it. You've purely got the clock. Yeah, um, you've, 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 you've purely got the clock. So there's no, there's no global soundtrack that we can use to kind of make sense of all these, of all these videos. So they're, they're, they're at the... It's like, I suppose, if you've got 10,000 runners, that's like 10,000 songs or 10,000 yeah, stories, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, exactly. So I, think, so I think it's interesting to think about a spectrum of these events, whereas at a gig, there's one point of focus and there's, there's basically one story to be told whereas at a marathon 
there's 10,000 stories to be told. Um, and so that's, that's where it becomes more interesting. It's not just about fitting video clips on a timeline, it's about providing a, a navigable collection of videos that enable to people to extract their own stories in, in, in some way. Tell me one or two of the challenges of making an app like this. Or... Yeah. Well, so, so the main outstanding challenge is, um, is about what to do with all this video. So at the moment, people are just recording videos. It's not streamed, it's not broadcast. They're just recording videos that sit, that sit on their phones. Um, and ideally, we'd want to get those videos online as fast as possible to provide a, some, some kind of reasonable online experience. Um, now, what happens when we have 10,000 people all spectating the marathon, they're only going to be in a few mobile phone cells and there's going to be many more than usual. So none of them are going to um, have a reasonable mobile phone signal. Um, and so if we start trying to upload lots and lots of videos from people's mobile phones, this, the, the network is just not going to, not going to handle it. Um, and so what, one approach we might take to this is to think about Again, is that another factor that we can use to kind of organise people or orchestrate people? Um, so if you and I are stood in the same spot, um, maybe we can say, we'll only upload your video because yours is better for some reason, rather than trying to upload them both because that, that has an effect on the network. If we have a collection of people and we kind of want to instruct them in some way, we can do so at a number of levels. So one might be to, is to get people to collect different shots, for example. For our video corpus. The other might be with an understanding of actually the network is pretty flaky here so only one of us should be recording. Um, so either we get us both to record and only pick what we consider to be the best or most, most appropriate shot, whatever that is, or we might say well no you save your battery life for something else, uh, you wouldn't be able to upload anything you recorded anyway so I'll record stuff um, and upload it. So there's a bunch of levels we can think about this. One is about uh, coverage, uh, like raw coverage, somebody being in a spot filming something. One is the finer details of exactly what the multiple shots are. And one is other kind of, I guess, more infrastructural considerations like who's got the most battery life, who will be able to upload stuff, um, even if, if, if they can record it, what's the best use of the network um, that, that these people are operating with. Who's got credit? Yes, who's got credit? <laughs>